Welcome back. We left off our last video with the architecture and traffic flow you see here. We've removed the management connection to the internal network from the DMZ and removed that security risk. By removing that connection and changing the management IP address of the ADC, we've removed the need for multiple static host routes and the need for the use of MAC-based forwarding. This is a solid configuration. The thing I don't like about this configuration is that the management IP address, the NSIP, sits on the DMZ and I see that as a security risk. The purpose of this video is to describe and build our second option for remediation. So let's move on to option number two. Since having a management IP in the DMZ may be a non-starter, how about simply moving the management connection to an isolated management VLAN? This would require a change of the management IP address again. Uh, in addition, to make the management IP address usable or reachable, uh, we're going to need to create a set of policy-based source routes to handle management traffic. Uh, if we don't do that, then we would need to use a jump box on the management uh, network to, to access the ADC. So if this were a physical Netscaler, we would have uh, had somebody go out and move a cable or uh, change VLAN on a switch port. But in this case, what we need to do is re-enable the 1-1 interfaces and enable them on a new VLAN then uh, you know once that's done we can change the NSIP so there we go we're going to enable this one you can see it's enabled save that config we'll go do the same on the secondary appliance system network interfaces enable All right, so now we've got both of those enabled and they're actually on new VLANs so the next step would be to change the IP addresses. Since we're changing the management IP addresses, we'll follow the same process as before. Um, the only difference we're going to do this time is we'll go ahead and set the nodes to uh, HA stay primary and HA stay secondary uh, before we reboot them. Uh, it'll be one less checkbox when we get to the part where we're reestablishing the high availability. One down, on to the next one.
Okay, they're both back. So now we need to uh, reestablish the high availability and add in the policy based source routes and verify that everything's running properly. So let's fix the HA, do the PBRs, move on. First thing we gotta show you is the current routing table. We see all the traffic is going out the management interface and that was to maintain reachability. That's the primary and that or that was secondary, this is the primary. So let's go ahead and fix the HA. We've already got these guys in state primary, state secondary. So all we need to do is go on the first one, add the second node. Give it the credentials. Click the little secure access. All right, we just want to refresh this until we see that the sync has been successful. Come over here, you can see that the config's been synced. Let's take this guy, put him back into HA enabled. Save that. I'm take this guy. Put him in the HA enabled. All right, clean. Save it. So the HA is back up and running. So we can do all our config from this side. So the next thing we need to do here is add the policy based route for management traffic. Give it a name. Down here we select new and we're going to put in the next hop for traffic from the new Netscaler IPs. Also the same as the current default gateway. Alright, so this is for source IPs. And so we want the source IPs that will match 192.168.1.42. One ninety two one sixty eight one dot forty three. That's the two NSIPs. All right, and this is destination traffic, so we say not equal to basically traffic that's on the local land for one ninety two one sixty eight zero. So we start at zero, go up to two fifty five. Say that gets accepted. All right, when you're done. You go over here, select action, do apply. Yes. Alright, so that policy based source route is in place and active at this point. Sending all traffic from the NSIPs to 192.168.1.1 if it's not local. So I'm just clicking around a little bit so I can generate some hits and show that the PBR is functioning. Alright. So there you see it. We got two hits at least. And that's enough to know that the PBR is functioning right now. Which means we'll be safe to remove the default route that's 
in there currently and we won't lose access to the management interface. Now if you go look right now in the load balancing services everything's down and that's because that default gateway is pointed to 192.168.1.1 so now we can uh, go and correct that let's go back traffic management sorry system network routes we'll add in a new default route This would be 192.168.2.1. Alright, I create that and we need to remove the old one. So we're just refreshing some things so that the GUI will update. You've seen that the uh, old route's gone, the new route's in place. We're still talking, so that means the PBR is working. You see, what well, we've had about 20 hits since then, so that's good. And we'll go back to uh, traffic management and look at those services. Now they're all up, except for LDAP. Guess what? We missed the firewall rule again. Same with the virtual servers. So we're going to go fix the uh, firewall and we'll come back and show everything up and running. Okay, the firewall's been fixed. As you can see, LDAP service is up and running. Virtual server is up and running everything squared away so this would be the completion of option number two this is a diagram of the traffic flow with our completed option two and as you can see the flow of data traffic has not changed the only thing that changed is that we moved the management IP address the NSIP off the DMZ network and placed it on an isolated management VLAN. This is a more secure configuration and preferable to the option number one configuration. When remediating an existing production configuration like the one we started with, this is probably the best realistic option available because the chances of moving a large organization into moving cables or a major re-architecture in a reasonable time frame are slim to none. Our proposed option number three is the same architecture we would build if this were a greenfield setup. Option three, or the greenfield build, is not any more secure than the option we set up here. Option three provides performance improvements when using a virtual ADC instance. These are called VPX instances. It doesn't necessarily scale better when using hardware ADC appliances, but it could if you were pushing the bandwidth limits of your network interfaces. Before we move on to option three or the greenfield build in the next video, I would like to provide some helpful hints to consider when remediating a pre-existing Citrix ADC environment. One, uh, don't turn off MBF unless you are sure they aren't depending on it. How do I know they're not depending on it? The only way you know is when you fully fix the layer three routing table to be able to reach all known addresses via the designated paths or firewalls. So if you haven't corrected the routing tables and, and tested, then uh, don't turn off MBF. Uh, two, you probably can't use new or additional interfaces. Uh, to get a new cable run, to purchase a new SFP, to do the things it would take to run new cables, um, usually takes two weeks to a month. 
three, uh, be careful adding the policy-based source routes. Uh, another place, like, like we showed, where it's possible for you to cut off your own connection to the ADC. Basically, you've got to figure out what they're doing, what they're depending on, and work within the framework they've left you with to make the best decisions you can. So, you have to get creative. We've certainly made some major improvements to the environment we found when we started this project. The new setup is no longer being held together by the technical equivalent of bubblegum, bailing wire, and duct tape. In the final video of this series, we will go through the design elements and build of a greenfield environment and go over the general do's and don'ts of Citrix ADC architecture and builds. If you find this interesting and would like to learn more, subscribe to our channel for more instructional videos. If you need help with your organization's technology challenges, please visit our website at positive-convexity.com and get in touch. Thanks for watching.